Hey guys, welcome to the lesson about uh, turns and angles applied. I hope you remember that um, we had Alex the applier and once you learn something or get some knowledge, you try to apply it and that's what we're going to be doing here today. So in activity one, you can see that there is a circle with a line and an arrow pointing where 12 o'clock would be and that's the start. And the activity wants you to recognize quarter turns or to make an additional quarter turn. So the in the second circle, a quarter turn has been made and the arrow is pointing at the 3 o'clock position. And that's showing you that one quarter turn has been made. You now have to do your activity and do an additional two quarter turns. So let's take a look at what that's going to look like in our notebooks. Okay guys, so we're working on activity one of turns and angles applied and uh, we put our walla in our book and our date on the top and then we can see the first circle and it shows us where the spinner might start uh, here at 12 o'clock and then it has moved over a quarter turn and the spinner is now um, or where the three o'clock would be showing us a quarter turn. So if we want to go ahead and put another quarter turn, it's going to be here. And then just to indicate that we turned, we'll use a different color and I'll color that in there. And just really, I do like solid coloring better, um, but just to indicate the turn, because this is not art, this is math, we just use a little bit of color like that. And then I'm going to keep going in a clockwise direction, and I'm going to do another quarter turn. So I'm going to use my ruler, and I'm going to indicate with the arrowhead like this, and that's another quarter turn. And then I'm going to color it in like this, and then I have done the turns that the activity has asked me to do. So I'll just stop there after I gently color that in so you can see that that's turned. And that is indicating two more quarter turns. Okay, activity two, we have to determine which child is correct. Is it going to be Jack or Alex? But first we're looking at the arrow on a spinner started in this position. So this is starting at the 12 o'clock position and after making a turn it ended in this position. So it's now kind of at the 9 o'clock position. And Jack says the arrow has moved a quarter turn anti-clockwise. And Alex says the arrow has moved a three quarter turn clockwise. Who do you agree with? So let's take a look at a spinner ourselves and see which way a spinner can go. Can it go any clockwise? Can it go just regular clockwise? Okay, in activity two, you're discussing the turns that a spinner can make. So I just spin, spun it a quarter turn clockwise. Um, you can see the arrow that was the start um, in the starting position. And that's not even quite a full quarter turn. Let's give it a bit more of a spin. Ah, it went 360 degrees there. It went the full way around. Let's see if I can also spin it anti-clockwise. Oh, yeah, I can. About a half turn anti-clockwise there. And it can continue going. So the spinner can go clockwise or anti-clockwise. So think about that and decide who is correct between Jack and Alex. Okay, in activity three, we're thinking about angles now. We're going to pause our thinking about turns and think about angles. And remember that angles have the vertex where the two lines meet. So in my name, Miss Charlotte, I have already found many, many angles. If you look at the M on the far left, you can see there's three uh, arrows there pointing to the different angles where the lines of the letter connect. And then in the letter S, there isn't any angles um, that we've found because we don't have the straight lines connecting there, nor in the letter C. But notice in the letter H, there are two on the top of the H and two on the bottom for a total of four angles there. So you have to go across and look at each letter and see... Are there any arrows missing where angles are? And can you find at least five more? Go ahead and draw it um, in your book or you can draw it on the computer any way you want to do it. And you could try this with your own name as well in capital letters. 
Okay, in activity three, we're looking for angles within names and make sure if you use my name or Miss Sithra's or your own, you write the name in capital letters. And on the first letter, the M, again, I have found three angles, so I've drawn little arrows pointing to those angles. On a capital I, there were four places where I found angles, so I've got four little arrows in there. And then you go and you look at each letter of the name and then you put little arrows where you can see the angles and that's how you do activity three.